Now, let's communicate with the communication unit called DLEN1 and read the PV value of GT2 series. The device configuration is as follows. KVXLE02 and DLEN1 are connected by the LAN cable. Two GT2s are connected to DLEN1. This time, let's use SR command to read the PV value. Specify station number of the sensor amp to read and data number of the data to read. The data number of PV value is 37. There are two formats for normal case and abnormal case for the receiving data. In a normal case, the data specified by the data number of this command. The PV value is returned for this time. In an abnormal case, the command which an error occurred and the error code is returned. I will set as both data in normal and abnormal cases can be received. Now I'll create a new project. In the unit editor, KVXLE02 is set, and, used is set for Protocol Studio. Before setting Protocol Studio, perform the communication test to check that the IP address and other settings are properly set. As shown here, nothing is set for this project. However, communication test is still available. Let's transfer this project to the actual unit. The transfer completed. To perform the communication test, right-click KVXLE02 in the workspace and select Communication Test. The Communication test dialog starts. First, let's check that the link between KVXLE02 and DLEN1 is correct. Enter the IP address and the port number of DLEN1 here. When communicating with the DLEN1 via TCP IP, the port number 64000 is used. This information is provided in the DLEN1 manual. When done, click the ping button. Then, this response is returned. Just to check, disconnect the LAN cable and click the ping button again. No response was returned this time. As you see, a link can be easily checked with communication test. In the communication test, not only checking the link, but actually sending a communication command is also available from this dialog. Let's send a SR command to try. The command can be directly entered with the binary data. In case of ASCII, entering from the keyboard screen is also available. The text can be entered directly, and data can be entered also from the keyboard screen. The control codes cannot be directly input, so click the button on the keyboard screen. As you see, SR command is now ready. Click the Execute button. A normal response data was received. The numbers displayed here are the PV value read from the amp. When a communication issue occurs, it is very difficult to figure out the cause, whether the IP address setting has a problem, any physical problem such as LAN cable disconnection exists, or the command contents, or the program is inappropriate. In case of KV Studio, sending receiving a command can be tested easily without settings and a ladder program. The issue can be easily isolated. For example, if ping does not react, 
there is a problem relating to the link such as IP address setting and LAN cable disconnection. If the response is inappropriate even though ping reacts, the sending command has a problem. Now, let's set protocol studio. On this menu, double click protocol studio and select manual setting. Enter the maker name and the device name. Here, enter the IP address set to the device to connect and the port number to be used for communication. Click OK. When OK is clicked, it indicates whether or not the default frame is set. In DLEN1, several commands are provided other than the SR command. All those commands have CR plus LF at the end. This time, only SR command is set. It is not necessary to set the default frame, but I will perform the setting anyway. Then, the setting screen opens. First, I will set the send frame. As explained before, all commands including SR command have a separator of CR plus LF. Here, select Separator and set, CR plus LF. For the receive frame, set CR plus LF separator as well. In the default frame setting, only settings which are common to all commands are performed. Therefore, click OK. Now, let's create a command. When the screen to create a command is displayed, the separators set in the default frame setting are already used both in send frame and receive frame. Therefore, if the default frame is set, you don't have to repeat the same setting when multiple commands are set. Now, let's set a SR command. Enter a command name first. Because the PV value needs to be read all the time, select cyclic instead of event. First, set SR comma section in the header. Click this, plus and click, OK while, header is selected. In this time, it is a fixed ASCII string, SR comma instead of a control code. So, select, ASCII. Directly enter SR comma from the keyboard and click OK. Enter a comment for easy reference. Next is the station number. Click the plus button and click OK while station number is selected. In this time, multiple GT2 are connected. Select variable so the target GT2 to read a value can be changed from the program. Type is ASCII and size is 2 byte. In the same way, enter a comment. Then, it is the data number section. First, set a comma. A comma is a fixed ASCII string, so select ASCII constant and click OK. Enter a comma and click OK. Next one is the data number. The data number is set as the data other than PV value can be read so the data number can be changed in the latter program. Therefore, select ASCII variable. This time, set unsigned and three digits constant. Click OK with this setting. Enter the comment. The send frame setting is completed. Now, let's perform the receive frame setting. First, the receive frame in a normal condition is set. Select header in the same way as the send frame. Select 
ASCII and enter SR comma. Next is the station number. From DLEN1, the same station number as the one specified in the send command will be returned. For example, if station number 1 is set when sending, station number 1 is returned in the response. This time, it is not necessary to store the station number to the device. As explained, if it is not required to store the received data to a device, select ASCII constant and select Verify character numbers. Then, only whether or not the character number matches to the set character number is checked within the received data. The station number is not stored in a device. This time, three characters including the station number and a comma are checked. Click OK. Then, it is the data number section. For the data number, the same number as the specified number in the send command is returned. It is also not required to store in a device, so select ASCII constant and select verify character numbers. Four characters including the data number and a comma are checked. This time, setting is separated to the ID and to the data number in the station number. In this way, it is easier to understand which setting is for which data when comments are added. Here, it is okay to set which seven characters are checked in one time from the station number to the comma next to the data number. Then, it is the read data such as a PV value. This data is a value to be stored in a device. The data count is 1, not variable, so select this. The data is returned with a sign and 9 digits of ASCII characters. The data range is a two-word signed integer. The missing digit is filled with 0. Therefore, set, two-word for used num of variable device. Next is the setting of digit number. For digit number, the number of digits which do not include a sign and a decimal point is specified. This time, it is nine digits excluding the sign. So nine is selected. Digit character specifies the character to fill the higher order digit when some digits are missing. In case of DLEN1, 9-digit data is sent. However, if the read value has only 7 digits, two higher order digits are filled with 0. Therefore, leave the setting with 0. As explained before, the decimal points are not included as the data is a signed integer. Therefore, the decimal place is also left as is. The last one is separator. When there is a comma or space after a number, set this separator. There is no separator for this time. Continue the setting. The set content can be checked in this preview. The positive or negative sign is automatically judged by the unit. Now, the setting is completed. Click OK. Separator setting is not necessary for this time because it is set in the default frame. Next. The settings related to the response reception in an error state. When this plus button is clicked, the number of receive frame patterns can be increased. The response data in error starts with ER comma. Therefore, select header and ASCII and enter ER comma. In the next command, the command specified in the send data is returned as is. For example, if SR is sent, a character string of SR is returned. This information is not necessary. For this time, only the character count is matched with ASCII constant. 
three characters including up to the next comma are checked. Next is the error codes. This is the information showing the content of the occurred error, so this information needs be stored in the device. Therefore, select ASCII variable. Digit number is three digits, and digit character is zero. Click OK with this setting. As explained before, separator has been set in the default frame. So the setting is completed. Now, let's make a program to communicate. The set command is cyclic, so write the latter program to turn on the operation permission relay. In addition, write the program for two lines. This time, read GT2PV value of station number 1. Therefore, the program to store 1 to the station number ID and the program to write the PV value data number 37 to the data number are created. First, it is the program to write 1 to the station number. Next, it is the program to write 37 to the data number. Before, the parameter comment was entered on the protocol studio settings screen. Therefore, the device candidate can be searched by entering a comment like this. Finally, the program to turn on the operation permission is written. The program is complete. Now, let's transfer the program to the actual unit and try the communication. The transfer completed. Let's check if the communication is actually established. Open the settings screen of Protocol Studio, right click the command, and start the registration monitor window. This is the read PV value. Change the display format to signed 32-bit. Like this, you can see that the value displayed on the GT2 amp is stored in the device. Delete the unnecessary device, click this icon, and start real-time chart monitor. When Start Tracing is clicked, you can see that the amp value displayed in GT2 can also be checked as a waveform. Finally, I will introduce Communication Monitor. Communication Monitor is a function to monitor the packet data which KVXL E02 is communicating with the connecting device. Right click here and select Communication Monitor. Here, select Protocol Studio which is currently used. Click this Start Tracing button. Then, the command content currently communicating can be checked in real time. Usually, these data cannot be monitored unless some special software such as Packet Capture is used. However, with KV Studio, the sent received data can be checked by Communication Monitor without using such special software. These data can be saved as a CSV file from this icon. For example, it is also possible to save the data when an error response is received for the later analysis. As you can see, when Protocol Studio is used, 
quick connection with various devices is possible just by selecting a model in case such model is the one Keyens has preloaded into Protocol Studio. In addition, by using communication test or communication monitor, devices that require manual settings can be debugged and monitored efficiently, so you can quickly connect.